In this video, we're going to focus how we can start to put in a bar chart the data labels, but make sure that these data labels consist of multiple values and a percentage value that is calculated based on whatever the values are in the bar chart. So let's start to look how to do this. So let's start to look how to add two values in a bar chart in Chart.js. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to chartjs3.com getting started. This specific link here, which you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on the site, just copy this entire chunk of code here. Copy that. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here. So then I'm going to paste that in here. And once I did that, what I'm going to do here is I want to extend the chart. Let's say this on 80%. And next, I want to cut out the title, put this title in here. Save, refresh, there we are. All right, so now we have this. Next, what I want to do is I want to put in our chart.js plugin data labels. This specific plugin here allows us to put in values in a bar, or basically data labels. So I'm going to grab the latest version, which is 2.0. Copy here the script tag, copy this. Then once we did that, we're going to go here, enter, enter, and I'll just put it within here. Make sure the chart.js library loads first and after the chart.js plugin data labels will be loaded. Why? This here had certain variables that is dependent on whatever is in chart.js. All right. So now we have that. If I refresh it, nothing happens yet. Let's activate that one. So we're going to put in here comma after between the options here. So after the options, we're going to say plugins, and we're going to activate or register this plugin. You're going to say chart with capital C, data, labels with capital D and capital L as well. Save this. Refresh. Now you can see it's being activated and recognize these values here. But I don't want this. I want a more uh, specific item. I want to change this data here. It will be different. So I'm going to put this away like that. We're going to create here a data structure. So with that data structure, we will later on insert the percentage values within here or the values and the percentage values as well. So we're going to say here, data, bracket, and then within here, uh, let's make sure here's a comma, we're going to put in here, curly braces, and here we're going to put in x, the x for the x value, and that will be just quite straightforward, the label day here, comma. Then what we have is next one, is our other values, and in this case, I just make it simple. I'll say one would be the available value, so there's like basically two ones, it could be sales or it could be use value, sales and uh, items available, something like that. But let's say here, available value will be 18, comma, and we're going to say use value will be equal to 9. So once we did that, put a comma here, I'm going to duplicate this two more times. Oh, not like that, but like this. All right. Then I'm going to change the values here, say 27, and this one 36. And this is of course not Monday, but Tuesday. And this one will be Wednesday. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hide these. If I save this now, refresh, it might break. And the reason why it breaks is here, it doesn't understand right now the data structure we have. Why? The Y variable here is not being defined. We have an X and that X is being recognized. Normally the labels is considered the X, but now it's available and used. So what I'm going to do here is I need to parse the new structure so that ChartJS understands this new structure. This is what we call parsing. And parsing basically means make something readable for. So in this case, we parse or make something readable for chart.js. So once we have this, what I'm going to do here, we say put in parsing and then I'm going to say here the y, then we're going to say access key, and that will be equal to whatever we have above defined. In this case, I'm going to say here available. So I'm going to grab that and put that in there. If I save this now, refresh you can see here it shows it and it shows exactly these values here of course this is still not done we're going to work on that another item is if you do just use we save that it switches to the other variable here so basically you have two charts in one and you can switch nicely with them anyway we're going to focus on the available item that's the most important one so i'm going to save that shift here we are so now we have this what i want to do now is we're going to use some features of the plugin i'm going to customize the plugin to a certain extent. So I'm going to say a comma here and I'm going to say here plugins and I'm going to grab here the data labels object name. So now we can use this and what I want to do here 
This is basically the following. I'm going to see here the formatter, which allows us to customize the structure. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say a value, comma, CTX. And what we will be using here, oh, make sure you have this uh, uh, function error expression because this is a callback functionality. I'm going to do your console log. This console log will be called CTX. Save, refresh. Open up the developer tab and you can see here you get the full object with all the information. So basically what I need to do now is I need to get a few items. I need to know the data set and the data set, uh, the data set uh, index. In this case we only have one index or one data set so it's always index zero. Next I also need to know the data index and this will become important because later on I want to get the data. So how do you get the data? Well within here chart, if you go down here you will see some of the data. Uh, let's see if I can find that one here. Uh, there you are, the data object. Click on this. And then from here, you'll be able to go to the data set index zero. That's this one here. And then we have all of the information here. But of course, what we want to have is data with this structure here. And eventually, you want to pinpoint to one of these items. So, what we're going to do here is uh, we'll do to here a, let's do a console log. And I'm going to say CTX dot chart. Then here dot data. So if I save this now and refresh, you will see we are now having we're getting closer to where we want to be. Now we have to select here the data set index zero. So we're going to say here dot data sets and here index zero, but this needs to be soft coded. So how do we soft code that one? Well, if I click here, you can see here we have the data set index, which is basically from ctx dot like that. So what we're going to do here is say cdx that. If I save this now and let's look at it, then we are now able to go into data set zero. But now I need to get the specific value depending on which bar we are basically pinpointing. So to do that, same story here. We have here the data index and that would define this specific bar. So what I'm going to do here dot data and here is a ctx dot data index. Save that. Refresh. And now if I hover over this one here, that's Wednesday, you will see here we get only the values from Wednesday. So how can we then pinpoint the final item? We can say a dot and let's say available. Save that. Refresh. If I hover over now you can see here we just only get the specific value. This is very important because now we can start to return a specific value. Let's return this. And what I will do here, I'll just say here available or it's constant available equals that and a semicolon here so if i grab this put that in there say refresh here we are but of course we want to have two values and then we also want the percentage of it so what we're going to do i'm going to duplicate this i'm going to say here but this will be used and of course here will be used as well so for this because we have now two variables and i don't want to do a complicated concatenation so i'm going to use template literals which is back tick back tick and then here dollar sign bracket and I'm going to grab here available and I'm going to say here maybe and I'm going to grab this and I'm going to say here dollar sign curly braces then use so basically now we have a concatenation if I do this it will show this one here so now we have this what I want to do as well well, well let's put it here just a line and what I want to do here is the total in percentages how do we do this? Well, basically, I make a new one. I'm going to call this the percentage equals. Then we have here the available. What I will do is available divide by available plus use. Once you do this, I'm going to. So we have the percentage and then available divide by. And I'm going to just basically get the available plus the use. So we get the total amount that is that's supposed to be in stock. So once we have this, I'm going to grab this percentage here, put it in here, but make sure this is a variable. This is a variable, so we have dollar sign curly braces. Put it in here, and then come put the percentage symbol, semicolon here, save, refresh. So now you can see here this will work fine, but look at this. This is absolutely horrible. So what I want to do here, and I realize I need to multiply this by 100 as well. So what I'm going to do this, I'm going to solve two items. All right. So once we have this. Is calculated then I'm going to multiply by 100 that's the first one 
If I save that refresh, all right, that works. But then I want to give it at least one decimal. And not that many that we have here. So we're going to say a dot two fixed number one. Save, refresh, and there we are. So now I have always a one decimal here. That looks absolutely phenomenal. And this is basically the way how you can do percentages, adding values based on data structures with the data labels chart.js plugin. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to know more about how you can use the charges data labels plugin i'm going to recommend you this video series here which is the charges data labels plugin it covers a lot of topics of the plugin itself highly recommended so you can use that for many different items